breaking. Uh, a couple of weeks ago at, um, at Crescent, a uh, guy had a beautiful Ducati 749R, kind of a rare bike and a, and a gorgeous bike, and he came up behind somebody a little bit too fast going into Big Ben and flipped it. Mm. You know, uh, as, my, as my mother would say, ass over TK. The thing went right over the front tire and onto the ground, and it was destroyed because he stabbed at the brake. He came up on somebody quicker than he thought he was going to, and he panicked, and he stabbed the brake, and locked the front tire, and flipped the bike. The most important, I think, the most important thing about braking is to squeeze and release the lever gradually and progressively. Gradually and progressively, both applying and releasing. Anybody get one? I got a question on the braking. If, you, if the corner comes too quick to you, and if you just go like this, it's not safe, like... No, that's not a good idea. No. If the corner comes too quickly, then you're riding too high in your threshold, first of all. And then next, you want to go to the brake early enough and gradually squeeze it. Because if you, if you poke at it, you're going to be upsetting the bike, first of all. You're going to be upsetting the suspension, which is going to make the bike hard to manage. What you want to do with the brake is, when you first go to it, is to give it a slight pull to set it. That compresses the front suspension and expands the contact patch. Now this guy is under extremely hard braking. Notice the back wheel's off the ground. We're not going to do that today. You're not going to lift the back wheel. But what it does illustrate is, look how much, look how collapsed the front suspension is. So, 100% of the weight is on that front tire right now. <coughs> if you can imagine, you're, you know, think about centrifugal force. What, what your tire is doing when you're at speed is it's expanding, it's getting bigger. Yep. And the contact patch on the front is getting smaller and smaller the more it expands, the more it grows outward. So when you when you slow down, when you if you just grab, well you're grabbing a lot of brake on little bitty contact patch. That's right. But if you if you gradually grab the brakes and just gradually roll it on, like a rail stat, just gently roll it on. You're not only compressing the, the front force, but you're also pushing that tire down, and it's expanding the uh, contact patch. So when you expand the contact patch, the more you got it flattened out, the more brake you can add in. So it just adds and adds and adds until you can do your maximum braking and then start to roll off. And you roll off the brake the same way, just real smooth, a little bit, a bit at a time. That's how this happens. There's another bike under heavy braking, and it's a little bit difficult to see from back there, but the contact patch, the tire, is spread out. So the progressive application and the jet and the expanding of the tire work together to provide you with maximum braking force for the situation you need. We should never have to use our brakes this hard. This is, this is a motor GP right now. But you get the idea, which is that you set the brake, compress the suspension, and spread that contact patch, which gives you that much more traction for braking, and then it becomes a function of the more brake you apply, the more expansion of the tire you get, the better the traction gets. It gets better and better and better as you need it more and more and more because you're breaking harder and harder and harder. Does that concept make sense to everybody? Yeah, and that's that's something that we're going to work on today is the, the effect of braking and steering. Once you begin to use the brake progressively and gradually, you get comfortable with that, then you realize that as you as you begin to steer, you know, you're braking toward the corner, as you begin to steer into the corner, you should just be releasing the brakes because it's the same with steering as it is with braking. Here you can see this contact patch a lot better. The tire's really fat and spread out. That's, that, that doesn't just help you brake. Think about it, that helps you steer. Because when you turn the bike in, you also want all the traction you can get on the front wheel, right? You don't want that front wheel folding on you. You don't want to be on the throttle with that front wheel light to try to steer the bike. So if you're just beginning to release the brakes as you're just beginning to steer, you have all that contact patch working for you, working for your control in that corner. It allows that bike to stick in the corner. Again, down from the threshold, but something to think about that those two things work together steering and braking are linked very intimately linked about how they affect your safety your confidence and the effectiveness of the bike to do its job <laughs> another bike under heavy braking back wheel not quite off but you can see the front suspension compressed steering mechanism is the rake and the trail this amount right here is what controls how quickly and easily the bike turns. So when you're coasting, it's neutral. However the bike was designed, that's when it's going to go straight, most comfortably, not wobble and wiggle or do anything crazy. But under braking, 
that amount decreases as the suspension compresses, these two lines come together, and the trail is smaller. That's when the bike is really easy to turn. Think about it, if those two lines came together, it'd be like spinning a noisemaker on a stick, but it would be pivoting exactly around that center. So the closer those two get together, the easier the bike turns, just by virtue of its geometry. And you change that geometry when you brake. And then, under acceleration, this relationship changes again. And hope the, the forks extend, the trail increases beyond the neutral point, and the bike does not want to turn. In fact, the bike wants to stand up and go straight. It's hard to turn the bike under acceleration. So, where do you want to be on the throttle to make the bike easiest to steer? On or off? Off. You always want to be off the throttle steering your bike. You don't want to chop the throttle, but as you roll off the throttle, the bike becomes really ready to turn. And, if you're, and the same with the brakes. If you're just coming off the brakes and that front suspension is still compressed, the bike will turn in very easily, very very quickly, very, um, very controlled. So that, that's why steering and braking are so limp. So because under, when you're compressing that suspension, either with coming off the throttle or with the brake, the bike gets ready to go. You can, you can just add a slight amount of power steering and it's going to drop in and go very easily. Very easily. Questions about that? Does anybody have any questions about how that works? So we have coasting, it's neutral. Braking, it's reduced so it's ready to steer. And acceleration, it's going to go straight. It's going to want to go straight. It's going to have, going to have a hard time turning the bike under acceleration. It doesn't want to go.